establish is directly from God, from the Creator, rather than what somebody wrote. Because, as you or I would agree, something that was written 400, 500, 300, 200 years ago by somebody who you agree is not from God, not God, okay, could be right, could be wrong, right? Yeah, okay. you understand my point? Um, yeah. So, it was uh, written by Dante, but he got it through Baphomet, yes. which he couldn't understand it afterwards, and that's why yes. uh, it's believed that. How do you establish that statement to be true, other yeah. than this was what was said to you? So, in... Um, uh, cantos, which is Italian for, uh, I think, poems, right? So in these poems that he wrote afterwards, he said that it's been on his mind and it's really bugged him that he can't read what it is. And also there's been countless uh, like documentaries and discoveries on it at why he couldn't read what he wrote. So lots of uh, satanic and biblical uh, scholars have determined that to believe that it is from so, uh, so in effect what you're saying to me, there's no rational, logical, evidential way of establishing that this is indeed something that you should follow, but it's a combination of people writing it, attesting to it, accepting it, encouraging others to do it, right? I mean, what, what would you um, define as like being a rational point? Now? As a Muslim, for us, we, what we believe is that Allah says in the Quran, if you speak the truth, provide your evidence. Yes. Okay? Yes. And Allah knows that human beings are driven by evidence. Because when you establish evidence, it convinces the mind of the reality of something, right? So for, as a Muslim, when I look at the Quran, for example, there are rational steps that I take to establish the claim that it makes, that it is from Allah, okay? And when I exhaust the possibilities that go against that claim, and I establish the claims that it makes, then at that point, intellectually, I'm convinced that this is not from any human being, but as it, as it claims to be from God, it is indeed from God. Now, as human beings, that's the best we can do, right? Yeah, yeah definitely. Because ultimately, just because something sounds good, doesn't mean it's true. Of course, yeah. Just because my parents tell me that this is how it was, doesn't make it true. Mm. Just because it uh, appeals to my own sensibilities or desires, doesn't make it true. So I established that fact through rational investigation to establish that this Qur'an that claims to be from Allah, could it have been anything else other than what it claims? Yeah. And so I would say my own journey of investigating, scrutinizing the Qur'an, because you know what it is, being born in this country, I don't have to be a Muslim. Of course. I can be a Muslim at home. Yeah. Outside, I can be Jew, Christian, atheist, uh, Satanist. I can be anything, right? Yeah. Nobody's going to really be able to follow me 24 hours a day to see how I'm living my life, right? So the point is for me, I had to be intellectually convinced that this claim in the Quran has to be overwhelming without doubt. Yeah. And it's only if I'm convinced of that fact will I accept remaining to be to remain to be a Muslim. Okay. I would advise you humbly mm. do the same thing. Okay. So what um, can you tell me one claim the yes. Quran has made? So for example, we can prove beyond reasonable doubt the claim of preservation. Okay. Now that doesn't necessarily mean something is true, I agree. But it is still a remarkable claim to be made because Allah says we shall guard it from corruption. There is no book in antiquity throughout human history which has survived centuries and centuries without the uh, human hands, let's say, influencing it. Now I'll give you an example as to why I believe that that claim of preservation indeed exists and can be manifested today not just in the literal form but in the very actions of how the Quran is distributed, spread, 
and red. So would you say that preservation is one of the main claims that you make no. as it to be in place? Preservation yet? has to be in place okay. for it to remain valid. So even though at the foundational level something might be valid, if it's not preserved, it's no longer valid. Okay? We still have um, the original book that Dante wrote in That's the museum. Fine. That's no, I agree. So what I said to what did I say to you? Yeah. I said that preservation alone yeah. is not a reason to believe of its divinity of course. or its correctness. Yeah. But you have to have that in place before you move on to the next criteria. Okay. And the next criteria, one of those would be So we both we both have preservation. Then. So one of them would be prophecies. Okay. The prophecies should be established prior to the event happening. Yeah cannot be changed or manipulated afterwards to fit what happened. Can you uh, tell me one? So one of them, we have Surah the Rome, which is uh, the Surah, the chapter called Rome. Okay. The Persians defeated the Roman Empire at that time. And the Quran said that within three to nine years, this is a term used in Arabic, which, which denotes a time between three to nine years, the Romans will once again conquer the Persians. Now, why is this a profound claim? It's a profound claim because there are many concepts, many aspects where the, the prophecy could have failed. Number one, it was counterintuitive because the Romans were defeated so badly by the Persians that it was expected that within a few years they would have been finished. There would be no Romans after that. That was the first thing. The second thing was that both of these armies actually were also ultimately defeated by the Muslims. So that could have happened before the Persians actually defeated the, the uh, Romans. After uh, the Muslims beat, is it the Jews or the Romans? Yes. What one? Sorry? The Jews or the Romans? So the, so the Muslims actually defeated both empires. Okay. They defeated the Persian Empire and the Roman Empire. Doesn't it say in a hadith that the Dajjal will come once they win though? No, no, but the, uh, when, when you look at the hadith you have to be very careful, okay? Because you have to look at the Arabic, you have to look at what the hadith exactly is referring to. We never had a concept because in Christianity, uh, Paul said to the people, don't get married, don't do any trade, because he said the second coming of Christ was coming immediately. Yeah. We didn't have this concept with Dajjal. What we were told by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that his coming and the day of judgment or the day of Dajjal coming was as close as this. And he put his fingers together. Now what that means is that throughout history, you have many tens of thousands of years, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of years, right? And the, sec the coming of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, meant that the last day, the, the Yawm al Qayyama, the sign, one of the signs, was that it's very close to the, the day of judgment. But it doesn't mean 10 years or 100 years. Nobody understood it like that, okay? But my point to you is that yeah. the, the Quran makes certain predictions. The Quran touches on certain aspects of nature that a 7th century Arab who was known to be illiterate by the people, even if he was the best of the scholars of the people at that time, he could never have made those would, would, you, would you argue that the uh, Bible has prophecies that have been fulfilled? Some that have and some that have failed. So, But the Quran doesn't yeah, fail, that's okay. the point. The so, point is, that, look, yeah, I believe on. that there are remnants of truth in the Bible. I believe that there are remnants of truth left in the Torah. Yeah. Okay? Why do I believe that? Because Allah tells me so. Allah says that these books were originally inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, Moses and to Jesus. I have no problem accepting that. Okay, so we But we can um, establish, yeah. but we can establish, I think uh, empirically, that they're not preserved. So, uh, on our first point of preservation, we can both agree that both of our books. Are I don't preserved. know about your book yeah. and, and its preservation. But from what I've told you. Yeah, that's fine. If you, if, if, let's say, for argument's sake, yeah. it is preserved. Okay. On okay. the second point of the Quran having prophecies. Yes. I agree. Yes. But our, uh, if I gave you a claim that our book made right now let's come true, would you believe that we both have prophecies that have been fulfilled? No, but I'll tell you why. Because remember, the, number one, it has to get every prophecy right. Mm -hmm. The prophecy has to be proven historically that the prophecy that was made came prior to the event. It made one 
um, prophecy that has come true. Speaking louder so we can also hear. Uh, brother's got, bro my brother's got a very low, low voice, so yeah. he's, uh, he's he's struggling. struggling. Uh, so, so, so the thing, the point I'm trying to make to you here is this: that uh, to make a prophecy and it come true, there's a, a, a let's say a balance of probability of any outcome that can happen yeah I could make a prophecy today of course yeah and it could come true yeah it doesn't mean I'm from God okay it doesn't mean I'm a prophet but the prophecy that was uh, but, but let me just yeah, get to that. Yeah, sorry, sorry. but the point is if I make several prophecies many of them are counterintuitive they are completely opposite to what you would expect happen and then they happen and I never get it wrong I think that holds on balance of probability yeah, yeah. it's a lot more probable of course, yeah. that it hasn't come from me but that's that's my point yeah that's my point so the claim that was uh, made in Dante's book was that another prophet would come in the 19th century who was bald and was called Anton yes. so who came in the 19th century yes a guy called Anton LaVey who then wrote the satanic bible yes we believe is a prophet as well yes. so the one prophecy that is in our book is fulfilled yes um, so it is fulfilled. Yes. So can we both agree? No, we can't. You have a major problem there. What? Well, well, I'll tell you why. Yeah, go on. First of all, you said 19th century. So you have a hundred years for a man called Dante. Five, 500. Uh, well, if you said the 19th century, right? Uh, no, Dante was in the 13th. No, no, but he said in the 19th century. Yeah. So you have a span of time of a hundred years yes. for a man called Dante, Anton, who, Anton sorry, yeah. who is bald, yeah. and that's the prophecy. Now I would suggest to you that there could have been a hundred Antons yeah. who were born in the 19th century 